Hey, God bless you. God bless you. I pray that y'all doing well. Uh, Hampley Third Pastor of Village Hills Fellowship. Just want to welcome you to our Wednesday Bible study. Uh, right now, I'm not feeling good at all. Like I've been sick all day. I've been in the bed since last night. So I will attempt to do as much as I can today doing this. For Bible study, I'm going to share my page out real quick. I pray that all of you guys are doing well. I don't know what type of bug this is that I got, but I'm not doing very well. So we'll give the Lord what we got until I can't give no more. So let's look at this real quick. Um, so we'll start with a word of prayer and then we'll then we'll get going. Um, Lord willing, we will go through all of Psalms, uh, Psalm 40. Amen. And then, uh, I'll finish there. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we just thank you for this day you've given us, oh God. I ask for your healing and your restoration of my body, my mind, my soul, oh God. Help all of us, oh God, that may be hurting and in pain, oh God. As you are the way maker and the deliverer, Father God, of our lives, our souls, oh God, and you care for us, Lord. We ask for your help in this hour, in this moment, Lord God, that you will come and help us, Lord God, right where our need is, Lord God, that we may receive your help, Lord God, and we may stand on your promises, Lord God, and trust you, Lord God, for everything that we need, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we ask that you open our hearts and minds to receive your word today, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, so looking here at this word, Psalm 40, I'm going to do kind of like I did last time. And um, I will do like I did last time and just have the words written out. I mean, just as I went through the verses. So we'll break this down because it's going to be four. It's going to be like, I think about four, say one, two, three, four, five sections. From Psalm 40. Let me share it with my wife. I didn't share this out. And I promise you, when I'm done, I'm laying back down. But it's where I've been at all day. So breaking this down, I wanted to start with verses one to three. And verses one to three focus on the benefits of seeking the Lord. Amen. The benefits of seeking the Lord. So now when you look at the top, you know, of the top of the psalm, it says, Psalm says, my help and my deliverer. So there's two things that he does in verses one to three, that he waited patiently for the Lord and he cried unto the Lord. Now, because he did that, the Lord gave him five benefits in response. And so I want you to consider the times that you need help from God, because oftentimes when we are in trouble or we're in some dire situations, you know, the Lord is like the last, the last that we ask for help from, you know, we'll go seeking our own way, trying to do things in our own strength or whatever plan that we got. But we don't just pause and say, you know what, Lord, I need help right now. And I'm seeking you. That's where we need to be. And that's where I pray. Like, as you listen to this, this Psalm, that that's what's in your heart to say. So when he cries unto the Lord and waits patiently for him, this is what the Lord does. One, he inclines unto David. So I'm listening intently to his cry. He's going to bring him out of a horrible pit in miry clay. That's number two. He sets his feet upon a rock, a place of stability. He establishes his goings, the way in which he's going to go. He establishes that route, the place he's going to go, the way that he's going to go. And only that, he puts a new song in his mouth and even prays. The benefit of seeking the Lord. And so, as again, this is very important. Because as he begins to share, there'll be people around you that come against you or just people around you that's, that's walking with you during that season. And then they begin to see what's going on right? They see the Lord lift you up. And it, it, for some, it can provide hope for them. 
For others, it may not, right? The enemies that come against you, they when they see you rise up and see you helped, like, man, I was trying to destroy this guy. I was trying to destroy this girl. Here it is. They ain't called out to the Lord and the Lord has delivered them. Sometimes that make them even mad. But we won't even focus on that. I'm going to focus on crying unto the Lord and waiting patiently for him. And again, this comes to a position of trust. That when I need something, is the Lord the first that I seek? Let it be for you that it is. Let it be for you that he is the first that you seek. Because when they do, and this may not always feel good sometimes, brothers and sisters, right? When, when we're seeking the Lord and the Lord is our help, people may begin to, they'll see it, that they will fear the Lord and they too will trust in the Lord. And oftentimes, if you haven't, you know, you walk with the Lord long enough, you will see that representation matters. Examples matter. And it helps me when I can see someone else living a righteous life, living, even if they're not righteous and they've sinned in some way, they go on to seek, seek the Lord to get it right. Amen. No matter what I'm going through, no matter how I'm going through it, I'm seeking God before I seek anything else. Verses four to 10. I titled this what the Lord desires. Amen. What the Lord desires. In verse four, he says, blessed is the person that trusts in the Lord and doesn't show respect to the proud or turn the lies. Right. Again, I'm going to make a deliberate decision to seek God. In spite of what's going on, right? Because sometimes when you're in, in dire straits, you'll seek the proud. You'll seek people that you know you ain't got no business talking to because you just want to get out of it as soon as you can. But it's in that moment that you say, you know what? I ain't going to lie, right? Because sometimes we even lie. We'll lie because we're ashamed. We'll lie, we'll lie because we want to get our way. But even in that moment, we say, you know what? I'm going to trust God. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to wait for him. And we understand that when he does, when we do this, then we can consider how the Lord prefers, performs many wonderful works. Again, when we're going through stuff, we don't always think about what God has done for us, what he's doing or what he can do. But in verse five, he says, consider how the Lord performs many wonderful works, testifying to what God has done in your life. The thoughts he has towards you. And so many times, brothers and sisters, we don't always think that God thinks good thoughts for us because all we think about is the sin that we committed and how much bad we've done, how much evil we may have committed in the past. But God is thinking good toward us and wants to do good toward us. But I need to remember that none can be compared to the Lord. And even if I tried to declare and speak on the Lord's wonders, they would be too many to count. Amen. Because we have to understand that the Lord, and this is what David shares in verse six, that the Lord's not looking for just for religious attitudes, right? I'm going through religious traditions and I wear a suit on Sundays. I take communion every first Sunday with a black uh, dress on or a black and white suit, right? Come on, y'all. I, I, I tithe, right? The Lord is not looking just for those, especially when our hearts aren't right. When we do evil toward others. So a lot of us look at the good we do. Come on, some of this is in scripture. When Jesus talked about the, 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 um, the man who gave 10%, right? They're giving all the two, 10%. But he looked on to the woman that gave two mites because she gave all she had. Or even the man that was boasting about what he was doing for God. And then the other one who just beat his chest and said, look unto me, Lord, a sinner. And God's like, I show respect unto that. See, in Micah 6, 
6 to 8, it says, Wherewithal shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the Most High, High God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Would the Lord would be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. That it matters about how we walk before him. We can do all those religious things and it can be in a, a stench in God's nostrils because he sees how we live. Why am I going to accept all of that religious stuff when you won't do good to others, when you won't love people? I won't do justly. I won't love mercy and walk humbly with God. God's not just looking to delight in sacrifices and offerings. He's looking at the condition of your heart and what the condition of your heart will draw forth and bring as a, as a result of. Let it be that in my life that I want to do justly. I want to love mercy and walk humbly with God. Amen. So then in verse seven, David goes to God's throne and brings a scroll of the book written of him. What does it say? I mean, think about that for a second. He's, he's saying, I'm bringing the scroll to you, Lord, that, that, of what talks about my life. And what does it say? It says six things. The scroll of my life, and you can testify to this, Lord. I delight to do your will. Number one, your law is within my heart. Number two, I proclaim the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Number three, I will not restrain my lips as the Lord knows. Number four, I have not concealed your righteousness within my heart. Come on, y'all. Number five, I have declared your righteousness in salvation. And lastly, number six, I have not concealed your loving kindness and truth from the great congregation. That no matter what I'm going through, that I'm, I'm delighting to do his will. Come on. How many of us in, in the midst of the things we're going through, the things that we're experiencing that would say, you know what? I'm delighted to do your will, Lord. In the midst of the enemy coming against me, right? Because a lot of times when the enemy's coming against us, we turn our attention to what they're doing and how they're coming against us and how we can come out of it as quickly as possible rather than saying, you know what? In this, in this moment, I'm going to do right by God. I'm going to delight to do his will. I'm not going to restrain my lips. I'm going to tell of his goodness. I ain't concealed the right, his righteousness within my heart. I declared it. And I haven't concealed your righteousness, your truth and loving kindness from the great congregation. Amen. Verse 11 to 15. Seek the Lord even when you sin. I, I love this perspective that David has right here. Because I don't know if I've even done this in my life. That when I've sinned, <laughs> that I ask the Lord as he delivers me, go get them. They coming after me for reasons why I, I, they coming after me for maybe a just reason. I've done wrong by them. But Lord, I need you to turn the tables. Because, see, when I go to God, I'm seeking to be restored by him. As he restores me, I'm now in right standing with him. And these people are still coming after me. Right. Verse 11 and 12, he talks about. Because of this, what he just talked about in the previous verses, don't withhold your tender mercies from me. Let your loving kindness and truth preserve me when I sin or when or when much evil surrounds me. That I can't look up because they outnumber the hairs of my head. So even when I sin. How many times do we do that? How many times do we look unto the Lord when we're in the midst of sin and say, Lord, let your tender mercies, oh God, don't withhold them. Let your loving kindness and truth preserve me. Because evil is surrounding me. It's so much, it's so much evil that they outnumbered the hairs on my head. 
And he's honest and provides this transparent moment in saying that David's heart, he said, my heart has failed me. My heart has, has forsaken me, has left me destitute. My heart has refused me. But even in this, let it be my prayer that when we sin, that we can be honest and transparent before the Lord. Let not your tender mercies be withhold, withheld from me. Let your loving kindness and truth preserve me when I sin. Let it be in these moments, as I said, shared a little bit before, that when we go through it, and even when we sin and we do what's wrong, we seek to go closer to God and not draw away from him. A lot of times, a lot of us will draw away from God in the midst of sin. We allow our heart to condemn us, like in 1 John 3 and 20 speaks about, and we won't go to God. We feel so much shame, right? We feel like Adam and Eve in the garden. We hide ourselves from God rather than going to the one that can help us, the one that can strengthen us, the one that can be there for us. Amen. So he says in verse 13, be pleased to deliver me and make haste to help me. Even when I'm doing wrong, even when I've done wrong, right, I'm going to get right with God. I just man falls seven times and rises again. Be pleased, O oh Lord, to deliver me and make haste to help me. And then as he as he switches. In verse 14, 15, he's like, look, those who seek to destroy my soul, let them be ashamed to confound it. Those who wish me evil, let them be driven backwards and pushed to shame. Again, how many of us can have this testimony after sinning against God and others and doing evil toward them that I seek to get right with God? But when I'm getting right with God, let it be that those who destroy, seek to destroy my soul, probably for a right reason, right? I may have done everything to, to, to be justified for their actions, but now I'm right with God. So now that I'm right with God, let them be ashamed and confounded. You know, you know what I'm saying? How many times have we continued to go against somebody even after they apologize to us? Even if we may have heard them repent to God, we still try to get after them. We don't see the fact that they they re had restoration with God. Like, yeah, you may restore God, but you ain't restore have any restoration with me. You still wrong me. We won't overlook the offense, will we? A lot of times we want to keep coming after them, even after they've repented, even after God may may have reestablished them and sees them right in His own eyes. Hey, God bless you, Kathy. Pray that you're doing well. But in that moment. Say, deliver me, restore me, and let them be pushed back and ashamed of their actions for them continue to come against me. Amen. Verse 16. It's uh is 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 rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. So regardless of what I do, I must continually seek the Lord. I must continually love his salvation to understand that salvation is not just for when we're doing right. Salvation is when I need it most. I remember before I came to Christ, uh, when I when I decided that I want to be a Christian, it was in 1997. I was attending the church, but I wouldn't go to the front of the church if I sinned any time that week. I could I could be doing good until Thursday. I would sin, but on Sunday, I wouldn't go to church because I felt like I had to do right before I came to God. Then another week, it was I got to Saturday night, and I was like, oh man, I did wrong. I can't come. But that day, the preacher said, regardless of what you've done, even if you've sinned against God recently, the Lord loves you and will forgive you. It has come forward. Amen. The salvation is for the sinner and when we need it most. And I came forward to seek the Lord. That we must continually seek the Lord when we need him most. Amen. Hey, God bless you, Valerie. Praise you doing well. Not just when everything is good. 
So don't allow. When you find yourself in sin, don't allow. Amen. The shame of your actions to draw you away from God. Just, Lord, I'm going to get right. In the midst of what I'm going through, that in the midst of my sin, I can repent and be right with God again. In the midst of the enemy trying to come against me, taking a swing at me, amen, I can repent and ask God to help me and be restored. That I'll continue to say the Lord be magnified, amen? So regardless of what you're going through, when you need God the most, I want you to seek him. When you need God the most, I want you to seek him. Amen. So then this last verse. And what I want to share in this last verse. Um, the Lord, how the Lord thinks of you. The Lord is your help. Amen. Because what he says here. Basically, is that being poor and needy does not turn the Lord away. Amen. Being poor and needy does not turn the Lord away. He continually thinks about David. And this is a shift for us because sometimes we look at our sin and think like God ain't, God's not thinking of me. Yeah, he is. He wants you. He wants to be in eternal fellowship with you. It's by loving kindness that he drew you out of all the billions of people in the world. He called you. And remember that it's not his will. It talks about this in second uh, Peter three and nine. That is not his will that any person would perish, including you. So when I'm poor, this is not just phys like materially poor. There's times the word means depressed, even in my mind or circumstances. When I'm needy in a sense of want and I feel like I'm destitute. The Lord thinks about me. He's going to deliver me. And I can ask him, don't delay, Lord. He proclaims that the Lord is his help and his deliverer. Not any plan or scheme that he may come up with, right? It's the Lord. And let us seek the Lord. When you, If there's nothing else that you've received out of this message, because I'm going to close. I ain't being with y'all long because I'm about to lay right back down. That no matter what's happening in your life, let it be that you seek the Lord. No matter your sin, no matter the mistake you made, no matter how you've done people wrong, go to God, go to him first. Restore your relationship with God and seek his help. Amen. That he makes no delay in helping you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we thank you for this time you've given us, oh God, just to study your word in Psalm 40. I pray that each of us, oh God, will not be ashamed, oh God, of our sin that we commit against others, oh God, and against you, Father. But we will take our, our lives and the things that we have done and bring them before you, Lord God, and we'll repent of our sins that you may show us mercy and loving kindness, Lord God. Deliver us, Lord God, from those who seek to do evil against us, Lord God, and help us to remember to keep seeking you no matter what we may experience. Father, we love you and we bless you in this hour. We ask for your continued help. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I appreciate y'all. As I said, I'm I'm not feeling good. I've been in the bed all day. So anything you've seen me do on social media is because I was in the bed. And I'll probably be in the bed tomorrow and maybe the next day. But the Lord will restore. And I thank him even the more. I pray that God will bless you all and that he'll keep you until the next time we meet. And until that next time, y'all keep looking to the hills. God bless you all. Take care.